Good morning, folks. We've got great shares today on space weather and human health, technological risk, electromagnetic precursors to earthquakes, your world of weather, and a galactic visitor to the Milky Way. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com, where the last 24 hours on our star witnessed the departure of the dark coronal holes from center longitudes and without any new sunspots or eruptive activity. The solar flaring remains flatlined on the floor without sunspots, and that solar wind intensification we noted yesterday was indeed short-lived. It's coming back down now in purple. The plasma speed is calming. We're also calming geomagnetically. As mentioned, these coronal holes are departing center disk, but their solar wind should be arriving here over the weekend. After that happens, it appears we do have a break between coronal sectors. Top quake of the last day was a 6.3 that struck shallow in Papua New Guinea. Luckily, there does not appear to be much damage, just an unnerving moment so close to the already on alert volcanoes. Speaking of earthquakes, our first two papers today come out of Japan and China. In Japan, there were significant magnetic field frequency fluctuations from a few weeks to a month preceding the fracture zone of deadly earthquakes. They determined space weather to be a considerable player, and so did the other study out of China, taking only a slightly different approach, noticing electron content changes in the atmosphere well before their seismic events as well. Folks, a very odd and unexpected cosmic ray note. It turns out that the last 57 relevant ground-level enhancements of space radiation energy took place during the positive phase of the quasi-biennial oscillation. This could be one of the most important space radiation studies I've ever seen. It means that about half the time, our high-altitude winds are actually helping to block energy from space. Speaking of which, this is a phenomenal study on transient luminous events in the upper atmosphere and their risk to suborbital flights. Even below the satellites, the environment can be hazardous, like for airplanes, and Earth's changing magnetic field likely only intensifies that concern. Let's quickly take a look at a globular cluster shot from Hubble. This cluster is in the Milky Way, but it's got a mystery. It is traveling way too fast and is moving in the opposite direction of everything else in the galaxy in terms of its orbit around the center. They think the entire cluster could be an extragalactic visitor. Lastly on the article front, a tremendously detailed look at cardiovascular health and space weather. They say that it is likely that the local electrical changes in the environment due to ionospheric response from space weather is likely to be what's causing the negative health outcomes in some. They also find it is most prevalent of a factor at solar minimum and could one day lead to a localized health alert system, if we say had a thrice robust global ionospheric monitoring system for the lowest part of the D region. Folks, we've got a cold event to mention before wrapping up today. It rarely drops below 18 degrees Celsius in Morocco, unless you're on the top of the mountain in winter. Snowstorms have shut down the country for a few weeks, and over yesterday, looking through today, I don't see a single temperature reading as high as 18C, the number they usually stay above at all times. Best of luck there. Regarding those space weather health alerts, only one place on Earth to get them. You can learn more about them in our book, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, and we've got three presentations on space weather and human health in the lineup at our conference next month. Registration ends in just four days. Folks, we've got your world of wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.35 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.